Hello, welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to calculate EPR parameters, G values and hyperfine splittings from magnetic nuclei uh, with ORCA. Here I'm showing you the molecule that we are going to study. This is the an organic radical which is the product of a, a reaction between an N-heterocyclic olefin and a cyclic alkyl amino carbene. So first we are going to plot the spin density so you can see where the radical is located. So for this we go to extensions, create surfaces and there the default options was were Van der Waals, but I choose cube data generated by Orca for the surface type. And uh, I color by the same uh, cube file. So I'm going to choose an ISO value 0 0.005 and I will calculate this. And you can see that basically most of the spin density, blue is positive spin density, which ironically corresponds to one negative ampered electron. And uh, red. Uh, indicates negative spin density. So basically most of the spin density is located in this carbon and a little bit into the nitrogen and carbon atoms in the cyclic al alkyl amino carbene and more of it into the NHC moiety. So we can now see <clears throat> more or less where the radical would be located. So now I'm going to show you the options that I use for calculating this. Many of the options are choices that are not really relevant, but I use a TPSSH functional. I use SORA, which is a relativistic approximation, and basis sets, which are appropriate for SORA. And an, as an auxiliary basis set, I use a uh, SARC J basis sets which are uh, auxiliary basis sets for relativistic methods that go well with this SORA basis sets. I also use implicit solvation with the SMD solvent model but this is not relevant now so basically I'm requesting the spin density I always do that for any calculation even if I don't I'm not interested in radicals the charge for this molecule was plus one and the spin multiplicity is two that means spin one half. This is the coordinates of the molecule. And at the end, and you have to put this at the end, is the EPR NMR module. So what I'm doing is using G tensor is basically I'm requesting the G tensor. And the ORI is the origin that it will uh, be considered in the calculation of the G tensor. G tensor has an origin dependence. You, you have operators that depend on the center. So you have to define the center. So basically the center is the center of electronic charge. So this is a, a good option. And then I ask for nuclei. That means that it will request hyperfine splittings for all nitrogen and all hydrogens. I could also list the specific atoms I want. But in this case, the molecule is not that large. So I didn't, um, I can request all of them, even if many hyperfine splittings will be very, very small for the, for the hydrogens. And I'm requesting two contributions for the hyperfine splitting. The isotropic hyperfine uh, splitting, which comes also called from also called Fermi contact. Basically, it arises from actual spin density in the nuclei uh, that generates an isotropic contribution and a dip is the, the dipolar contribution so whenever you have magnets you have a dipolar interaction between those magnets that dipolar interaction depends on the particular orientation between the distance between these magnets and the orientation of the magnets and also it depends on the inverse cube of the distance so what are the magnets? One of the magnets is the electron and the other magnet is the nuclei, magnetic moment. So basically the, this is the, the minimal thing you need for hyperfine splittings. 
You can also request other stuff, for example, spin orbit coupling contribution, but for organic radicals, which are based on hydrogen, carbon, well, carbon doesn't have a hydrofan splitting, but nitrogen, uh, even fluorine, for example, the spin orbit coupling contribution is very small. You can calculate it just to be sure, but it's generally not very important. But if you work with 3D transition metals and uh, 4D, 5D, etc., and lanterns even more, the spin orbit coupling contribution is very important and it may dominate even. So with this, what I'm going to show you the output file. So this is the standard output, has all the orbitals. And then at the end, it has the section for the uh, hyperfine splittings. So I'm going to basically after it calculated the dipole moment and after we calculated and exported the plots for the spin density and electronic density, it starts calculating the hyperfine splittings. So there are many details here that says, for example, the isotope, the quadruple moment. Those are data that are tabulated for different um, nuclei. This is using an approximation for the spin orbit coupling, but we are not actually going to uh, calculate spin orbit coupling contribution. So after it gives a lot of data, it does calculation on the G matrix. So if we look at the G matrix, basically this is the full G matrix. So Magnetic, gener uh, magnetic interactions in general are anisotropic. That means they are defined by matrices, which indicate how the different values of the interaction point in different directions. So in here, we can see that this is the G matrix. And the values are very close to the electron free value. 2.0023 would be the electron fee value and the average G value for the whole molecule is very close to it. That is basically because it's mostly a carbon centered um, radical. This would be much different if, you, if it were a metal center or even a nitrogen center radical would have slightly higher G values. So and then here it comes the different uh, data for each nucleus. So this is the 0n is one of the nitrogen atoms. So basically it's calculating the full hyperfine matrix and it gives you the contribution of the Fermi coupling, the isotropic. You can see it's the same value for X, Y and Z and the contributions from the spin dipolar interaction are much lower but uh, non-negligible. You can notice that the, these contributions, if you add them up, they will sum to zero. That's a, a mathematical property of dipolar of the dipolar interaction. So basically, if you um, measure your EPR spectra in for an organic radical at high temperatures in solution, the molecules will rotate in all directions quite fast, so you will probably only measure the isotropic contribution to the hyperfine splitting. You need to slow down the movement by increasing viscosity of the solvent, or you have to freeze the solution or use or measure a powder in order to detect the anisotropy. So basically it gives you the isotropic, the total contributions and the isotropic uh, value for this nucle nucleus that is the same as the Fermi coupling. And so this is another nitrogen. It gives another value. These are only megahertz. These are small values. And the other nitrogen is 7.44. So for the hydrogens, most of the splittings are uh, quite low, except for this hydrogen. 
and this hydrogen which have a uh, quite large hyperfine splitting. So we are in a future video we are going to discuss more about this molecule and about how accurate these values are and what chemical information you can gain from that. This is this video was only to show how can you can request hyperfine splittings. So if you found this interesting and useful please like and subscribe and Please also leave comments for any questions or uh, requests for future topics to address. Thank you very much.